Before I bought a replacement radio for my plane, I looked online to try and find some uh, videos to show me what some of the newer radios were like. One of the ones that I was particularly interested in was the Dittel uh, KRT2. Uh, it looked like it had quite a nice display and a good range of features. But I couldn't find any uh, video showing the operation of the radio, so I thought now since I've bought one, uh, I would do a video to show other people. So here's the box and I'll take it out, you can see what you actually get. There's not a lot in it. Your thousand pound basically buys you literally just the radio. There's not much else in the box. There's no manual and there's no connector. And it's really just the radio. So the idea is, is that you take uh, a copy of the manual from the website um, and uh, you source any connectors and adapters yourself. So this is the radio. It's very light. It's about 400 grams. Um, you've got two connectors on the back, one which has got all your signals and your supplies and you've got the RF connector. You'll notice there are two locking latches on the, the back and you'll need special uh, D sub latch uh, adapters for that um, to enable you to connect your D type and I've, I've got some of them here. I'll put a link in the bottom of the video for these latches um, which you can put onto any D type uh, D sub connector and then it, you can use the quick release latches on the back of the radio so it's quite convenient. Right what I've done is I've um, made up a, a loom here so I'm just going to plug it in. I've got a power supply um, already configured for 12 volts. So I'm going to power the radio up now. The first thing you notice is that the display update is quite slow. It sort of scrolls across the display as it's drawing it. I don't know whether that's just a function of the display or whether that's just a limitation in the processor speed. But anyway, when the, the unit comes up, um, the display is quite high contrast. Um, although it does take about 10 seconds for the startup uh, sequence, I don't know quite why it's so long. Um, at 12 volts in standby, it draws about 150 milliamps. So even just sat there doing nothing, that's 1.8 watts. So if you're used to some of the older radios like the Microair M760, uh, that was only one watt. So you almost double the power consumption. So if you're going to use this in a glider, then you just need to be aware that uh, the power consumption may not be as low as your previous radio. Looking at the various buttons and controls on the radio, uh, you find that the, the switches are quite uh, reasonable quality. They uh, don't stand out too much so you can't accidentally hit them and damage them. The only one that really stands out is the, the main uh, rotary knob and the default setting um, for that is to control the volume. So here it's volume 10, I think it goes up to a 20. There we go. So I'll leave that at 10. Uh, it's two colour display. There's yellow and white on a black background. And uh, you can use the buttons to control the various features. So for example, there's an audio button that uh, toggles through the squelch, um, the intercom, um, voice threshold, the vox. You can set uh, the, whether it's left or right microphone or both are active. The intercom, an external audio input level, the display brightness so you can you can dim it down for night operation. The battery voltage is pretty accurate. I've got it set to 12 volts on the power supply and it's showing 12. And it just toggles through the settings. Sit is the side tone, so you can set the side tone level. And there's a microphone test. Um, you need to have a microphone plugged in to, to test that out. It also shows you the external audio input level as well. So in normal operation then, if you want to change the frequency, you have to press the rotary knob in. 
you see the cursor at the side highlights that's where uh, it's active. All the characters that are not not being controlled uh, become partially greyed out and the one that you're going to control stays bold and as you turn it the value changes and then if you want to change to um, modifying other digits you just press the button in until you set the frequency that you want and then if you want to toggle it up to the active frequency you just press the flip-flop button and it goes up into the active frequency. One thing that's slightly disappointing is that if the frequency that you've entered is one of the frequencies in the memory it doesn't recognize it and uh, display the the name of the channel it just gives you the frequency. One of the nice features about this radio is you've got eight characters uh, which you can assign to the memory um, to go with the frequency so for example the standby frequency at the minute one through three decimal four is new key approach so I've got that uh, um, listed here in, in, in the memory. Um, I've taken the vowels out to shorten it down um, so that it fits in the eight characters and I've uh, suffixed it with a lowercase a for, a for an approach frequency. It's easy to select the memories, you just press the memory button. There are 99, well there's 100 mem memories including memory zero. You can sort them into alphabetical order and then the rotary knob just selects them. So for example if I want Bristol approach, there's Bristol approach and then I just press the toggle button and it gets transferred up to the active frequency. If you want to monitor a second frequency you can use the dual watch feature and then it will listen to the two frequencies and if it receives on one of them an arrow will appear to show you which one you're actually listening to at the time. You can edit the menus, uh, sorry, the memories on the radio, but it is a bit of a fiddle to do. But what's rather nice is that uh, Dittle have actually allowed a, a serial port connection, so you can connect it to your PC, and there's a small app you can download from their website, and that allows you to, to transfer the files or, or the memory um, settings over directly. Um, what's even better is, is that you can edit the uh, settings in a, in a text editor or in Excel and import that into the into the application and transfer it over. So here I've got um, my Excel spreadsheet. All I've done is I've taken a copy of all the frequencies for the uh, south of England off the CAA uh, frequency reference card and then I've, I've listed them as uh, radar approach, tower, uh, information or air ground and I've also got some special frequencies and then I've written a macro which takes those and it creates a list of frequencies um, where it, it, it's got the type as well as the frequency and then it takes the name, strips out all the vowels apart from any leading characters and gives you um, an identifier which hopefully is sufficient to identify the station um, and then it suffixes it with uh, an A for approach, R for a ground radio, I for information um, and T for tower. These are then converted into the right format for the DITL application and then here's the application so you can load the file in, in fact here's the file loaded and it's got the frequencies with the names that I've assigned and then it's as simple as clicking on transfer, connect it to your radio as connections are shown and then you can you can just write the stations directly and it, uh, it just takes a, a short period of time to do it. I'll attach details of my spreadsheet uh, to the bottom of this video.